I think one of the things that I like so much about people live that also drives so many people crazy is they want to know, well, how do you do it? I said, well, you just do it. <laughs> you pick up your camera, you pick up your book, and you go. And you know, that's part of what's so good about Video Go Live is that you don't plan it. You don't sit down and say, hey, you know, I have to have a filming shoot. You know, I have to sit down and coordinate all the shots. I have to take, you know, a certain amount of light samplings or I have to go somewhere, you know, and I have to be something that I'm not. Matter of fact, in Video Live, one of the fun things is that we just go and do. And when you just go and do, you don't have to worry about what you're going to do. You don't have to worry about what you're going to say. Because you kind of know that God is going to take care of you along the way. And because he's going to take care of you, you don't have to sweat the small stuff. You see, the big stuff is his job, and the small stuff is your job. But you don't even have to sweat that, because you already know what you're doing. You're saved. You're heading for eternity. You're going to spend the rest of your life, after you die, in life. It's not like you're going to die. I mean, you're going to live. Isn't that what Jesus said? So you really have something to share, but you just don't realize it. 90% of the time, that's the biggest problem that most Christians don't realize. They're looking for a certain result, and they think they have to follow or do some perfect example. I'm going to lock myself out of this gate in a minute. Which is okay, because that's the way it works out sometimes. But you see, with Video Live, one of the things that I like doing is, I like taking it to the streets because that's where I grew up. I grew up on the streets. You know, people who knew what they were talking about, they would give you some street savvy. You know, and they would kind of tell you what's going on or what's happening. You know, they would share with you, you know, what they'd learned. You know, it's kind of like, hey, if you know George down the street, you know, he's got this and that and the other thing. He can do this, that and the other thing. And that's what we used to call street savvy. You know, it's kind of like, well, you know, you don't want to go down there because they're doing that. Or you don't want to be up there because they're doing that. I don't know how to tell you this, but you may not have street savvy, but you got spiritual savvy. You know, the kind of stuff that you're learning and you're growing and you're knowing and you're flowing and you're showing. Those kind of things that God has shown you. You know, those kind of things that you're still learning how to do and how to be. You know, this whole thing that we call Christian, you know, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a living experience. Once you've lived it, then you know it. But if you haven't lived it, you don't know it. So, what are you talking about? Well, you see, that's what the point is. you got to know what you're talking about. Street savvy was always knowing somebody walking down the street might know something that you don't know. They might be able to give you the heads up on what's happening. They might be able to tell you about what's going on down the street or up the street, downtown or around the town. Matter of fact, 90% of the time, as soon as it was dark and after dark, you'd find more about the streets than you knew that you wanted to know about. But at least you knew what was going on all about you. And that's kind of what happens with spiritual savvy. You see, a lot of times Christians have forgotten that, hey, you know, you're supposed to have some spiritual savvy. You're supposed to be knowing what's going on up there so you know what's happening down here. Because if you don't know what's happening up there, you have no idea what's going on down here. Because you've gotten kind of like your focus off of the place you should have it. You should be paying attention to what God is saying. So that way you can have some spiritual savvy about what's happening in the streets or on the streets or where you live or how you live. And that's kind of what Jesus came along. He said, look, I know you think you got it all together. I know you think you know what you're doing. You haven't a clue about what's really going on. And I used to have to do that sometimes with people that I'd meet. You know, they'd, they'd have you know, all this intelligence. You know, they'd be really smart, but they wouldn't have a lick of common sense. Matter of fact, you couldn't take them out in the woods for nothing. And you know, some people that live in the streets are like that. You know, they may have a lot of street savvy, and they may know how to be tough and be rough, you know, and jab and rap, you know, and kind of talk a good story. But you stick them out in the wilderness in Alaska, guess what? They won't last five hours, much less overnight, because they'll die. <laughs> they have no wilderness experience. You know, oh sure, you know, street savvy works good when you're in the street, but guess what? When you're out in the bush, you better know some bush savvy. <laughs> because quite frankly, 
being in the bush, you have to have some survival skills. And that's kind of what street savvy was all about at one time. It was like knowing how to survive on the streets. Same thing was true about being in the wilderness. you got to have some wilderness survival skills. Well, that's kind of what spiritual savvy is like. You know, you got to have some survival skills because, quite frankly, once you're there, if you don't know how to survive, you won't. Whoa! Man, that begins to make sense. So, if I'm sitting on the streets, I know that's street savvy. If I'm kind of like in the wilderness, I know how to have wilderness savvy. But guess what? If I'm standing in heaven, man, I better have some heavenly savvy. <laughs> well, sort of. <laughs> I'd rather talk to someone who's been there and gives me some savvy about what's happening than just to sit around and try to guess about what's going on. And that's kind of what a lot of people do. You know, they'll give you their best guess. Haven't you ever heard someone say, well, I think. Well, that's kind of nice. I'm glad you think. I like to think, too. You know, that's kind of why I got a noggin. You know, I don't have to have someone knocking on it. I just have to use my noggin. And then someone else will say, well, I believe, and I go, well, that's nice, I'm glad you believe too, because, you know, I believe and I kind of like what I believe in. What do you believe in? And I like listening to what people believe in. They tell me all the time things they believe in, and I'm happy for them. Hey, chilling and killing, you know, what you're believing in is great, man. You know, just dig it. If it's working for you, do it. If it ain't working for you, hey, you know, you might want to reconsider, but, hey, as long as it's working, do it. But, you know, I still like to find someone who's really got some savvy. You know, like when I went to the bush in Alaska. When I lived out in the wilderness, I could tell someone who knew what they were talking about from someone who didn't know what they were talking about. Quite frankly, because someone would say, well, you know, you just want to go down to the 7-Eleven, you know, pick up some, you know, trail mix, you know, and you'll be fine. I didn't see any 7-Elevens out in the bush. <laughs> that guy didn't know what he was talking about. Now, someone else may tell me how to go out into the tundra, you know, and maybe crush it or pulverize it or look for you know, sand veggies that were growing, you know, out in the wilderness or, or you know, take some muck tuck, you know, that was kind of like whale blubber and chew on that for a few days, you know, because it'll keep you going while you're trying to get out of the wilderness. Oh, he knows what he's talking about because he's been there, he's lived there, and he's experienced it. That's what we call someone who's got savvy, someone who's got sand, someone who's experienced in those things. We like to put credentials on people that we think knows what they're talking about. And so sometimes, you know, we got these doctors and we get lawyers and Indian chiefs, you know, they got all kinds of title in front of them. But I like to find the guy who's got some grit, some gristle, you know, some sweat on her brow, some scars on her hands, someone who's been there, who knows what they're talking about. That's why I kind of like stick with Jesus, you know, when it comes to what's really going on upstairs, as opposed to what people are talking about downstairs. Because downstairs, they always got something to talk about. You know, they'll They'll complain about the government, or they'll complain about taxes, or they'll complain about, you know, whatever they're complaining about, because that's kind of what you do downstairs. You know, when you want to complain, you go downstairs. But you know what? When you go upstairs, you're kind of like listening and seeing and experiencing things that, man, I ain't never seen anything like that before. And that's kind of what God did when he came downstairs. God said, look, I want you to live upstairs. I want you to move uptown so that you're not downtown. I want you to kind of like moving on up, you know, to the east side, like they used to sing that song. And I want you to kind of live a better life than what you're doing, because you know what? You really don't know and have a clue about what you're doing now, do you? And most people could agree to that. You see, once Jesus came along and said, Are you happy? They said, Well, yeah. And he says, Okay, well then, tell me what your definition of happiness is. So they did. And he said, well, that don't sound happy to me. Are you happy when, you know, things go wrong? Uh-uh. Are you happy when you find yourself, you know, like in tribulation? Uh-uh. Are you happy when things are like, you know, the Romans are taking over? The Romans are coming. The Romans are coming. Uh-uh. We want to get rid of them. Well, I got a way you could be happy no matter what happens. Huh? <laughs> and that's basically what happened was that. Jesus came and gave a message that people didn't understand. He said you could be happy no matter what the circumstances are. Matter of fact, you could be happier than you've ever been before in your life. You could know happiness in a way you've never known before. You could enjoy life that God has given you. And you could share that life with someone else. You could be so filled with happiness that 
whether life or death, whether principalities or powers or spiritual wickedness in high places, no matter what the Romans do, no matter what the government does, no matter what anybody does, hey, you don't need to fear. You can know that God is near. Matter of fact, you can be so thrilled that you're going to have eternal life that you're not worried about any of these things. As a matter of fact, you're going to rejoice and be glad in them. And that's why it's so much easier when you're taking it to the streets to actually have something to say. You know, something you've lived, something you've gone through, something you personally have experienced. And that's kind of what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be talking about what we do know. I'm trying to catch the gate real quick because I don't want to get outside of it. And that's kind of what God said to do, too. you got to catch it when it's open. You know, don't be locked out because there's coming a time when God is going to close the door. He's going to lock you outside the gate and you're not going to get in. So when it is an opportunity to take it to the streets or when there's an opportunity to talk about what you do know, then you should. Because if you don't know, then guess what? You're just trying to sell somebody a story. And you know what? We all like stories. We all like to hear the happy endings. We all like to talk about something that, you know, sounds good, looks good, but may not be good. I like to talk about what is good. I like to talk about what I've experienced. I really do like to go to the streets because I know what I'm talking about. I've lived on the streets. Matter of fact, I've lived on the streets, I've lived in the bush, and I've lived in heaven. Because God has taken me there in a way that just blew my mind. It's kind of like, it may have been the lowest heavens, and it may not have been much, but guess what? It was enough to make me go, oh, baby, I want to go home. And that's kind of what we do when we share things. When we talk about where we've been and what we've done, we know what we want to accomplish. We know where we want to go. We know where we're going. At least I do. Do you? Christ, or Jesus, who is the image of God. Whoa! The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. No man has seen God. I'm reading the devotional from Daily Light, by the way. In case you're wondering, you can see it, maybe. So, the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. No man has seen God at any time. But the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory as the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. He that hath seen me hath seen the Father, the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. God was manifested in the flesh, in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature, whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate, to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. And we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. You know, that's kind of cool. You know, here you are, you're talking it, you're taking it, you're you're making it, you know, and you're kind of like baking a cake, you know, and you're talking about heavenly things, and people are going, huh? Well, that's because they're the earthly things. You know, when you're talking about the heavenly things, you're talking about something that God says he's making in you. He's baking in you. He's remaking you into his image. And that's kind of why Jesus came down, because, you know, it's like people were saying, hey, I got this image, and I got this idea. I think I know what God is like, so I'm going to tell you what it's all about. And that's kind of like, you know, the person trying to sell you something, you know. They're going to tell you that it's a good car. They're going to tell you that it's a wonderful car. As a matter of fact, this car is so good for you, I'm going to personally guarantee it. Well, you know, a guarantee is only as good as the person who can live up to the guarantee. Quite frankly, when Jesus said, you're going to die, you could be born again. I am the resurrection, I am the life. If he had never been resurrected, I'd say he was full of baloney. I'd say he was kind of like out of his mind or, you know, out of his head. And if he was still dead, then I guess we'd be all accurate, wouldn't we? We'd be saying, by golly, you know, I think that guy was crazy. You know, because there he went and died. And obviously we all saw he died. The only problem is, oops, he didn't just talk about resurrection. He didn't just try to sell you a bill of goods. 
He didn't just try to tell you that there's a way that seems like a good idea and I'm going to tell you about it and then, you know, I'll pursue it and you pursue it and we'll see who gets there first. Matter of fact, he came down and said, it is going to happen. I'm going to die. And three days on the third day, I'm going to rise from the dead. And guess what? I don't know about street savvy. And I don't know about bush savvy. But when it comes to spiritual savvy, oh my God. Guess what happened? He rose from the dead. Oh no, we better let go. Because <laughs> something happened. Somebody changed history. They even have time change because of him. I mean, you know, this AD, BC thing? Hey, must have been something went on. I think we call that the resurrection. I think we call that the truth. I think we call that the way. Because somebody made a big difference that day. Somebody changed the world. Because he did. Not only did he have street savvy. Because he shocked everybody on the street. Not only did he have bush savvy. Because he kind of like told everybody what was going on. The man had spiritual savvy. Ooh, maybe I ought to pay attention to what Jesus said.